Let us stand and together praise God with our most joyful voices by singing, O Come, All Ye Faithful, stanzas one, three, and six. Grace and peace be with you. We who walk in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines on all people, spreading life and hope. Amen. Christ is the world's light, the true light, which enlightens everyone. As we light the Christ candle this night, we give glory to God. Candle, 
makes his home. Lonely, the tired and worn. Hold out your candle for all to see. Take your candle and go light your world. Take your candle and go light your world. are blazing let's raise our candles and light up the sky praying to our father in the name of Jesus make us begin in the darkest time raise your candle run to the Seek out the hopeless, confused and poor. Hold out your candle for all to see. Take your candle and go light your world. Take your candle. O little town of Bethlehem, stanzas one, two, and four.
be seated. Let us pray together. O oh, gracious God, on this sacred night, a night like none other, we invite you to enter in to each and every one of our hearts and fill us with your light and your joy and your love. And we pray for a world that is war-torn. We pray for a world where people are hurting and feel they have no one to turn to. And we ask that you would give us mindful hearts so that when we encounter others, we remember to be kind and gracious and to see your presence in them. And pour out your Holy Spirit on this sanctuary tonight and come alive for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I wish you could see. I wish it finally works. <laughs> I wish you could see from my point of view what you look like in this beautiful sanctuary. You look amazing. And it's wonderful to have this sanctuary full of people. And like you or many of you, I look forward to this night all year long, and you bring alive the gift of Christ tonight, and so we want to celebrate you with our hay card, and you should see a hay card in the back of your pew, and this is really important to me because what I will do is, if you'll fill this out and drop it in the offering plate, then tonight, before I go to bed, I will take these cards and I will pray for you by name. And if you want to connect in a digital way or you're worshiping online or through our televised broadcast delayed a week, go ahead and connect with us through our website. But this is so important to me. If you are a guest here, we welcome you especially, and I would love to connect with you in a more meaningful way. So fill out, if you will, our Hey card. Every single Christmas, we take up a special Christmas Eve offering. And we give it, a portion of it goes to a special cause in our community because we like to keep an outward focus at this church. And we have six community partners. They're listed in the prayer list uh, in your bulletin. And for this year, a portion of our Christmas Eve offering will go to support the Children First Early Learning Center. After the pandemic, what we found, and this is true nationwide, for preschool and daycare teachers that they were burned out, or there's a lot of turnover. And one of the most important things you can do for a quality preschool is to have strong teachers. So a few months ago, we brought in a specialist to come in and shore up our teachers so that we'll have a stronger, or this will be a stronger program. But this costs what? Money. And so we're going to ask you tonight to be extra generous with your year-end giving and with your Christmas Eve giving and help us to support this, this ministry. And it really is a mission and ministry because 68 students are enrolled in the Early Learning Center and almost half of those are subsidized by the state. So we hope that you'll be extra gener generous with our community's children. Let's pray together. Oh God, accept these gifts that we offer this night, and may they bring glory and honor to your name and kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, 
and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and got into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now into Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying, lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed and what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds turn, returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, and as it had been told to them, the word of God for the people of God. Well, thank you, Peyton and Nora, for reading the story of Christ's birth according to Luke's gospel, the second chapter. And don't we have fantastic musicians here tonight? Great job. Thank you. And I think I'm finally settling in. Cleo McQueen, our other pastor here, is out, she's sick and not able to be here. We miss you, Cleo, if you're watching, but she usually takes care of the details. So um, it's been a little bit scattered to, tonight, um, but we will look forward to Cleo's return. So let's pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, come in the way that only you can come and illuminate, shine forth your wisdom and light into our hearts and minds so that we can go out into the world and be your hope, your light in a hurting world. And may the words of my mouth, as well as the meditations and reflections of all our hearts, may they be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. Ready or not, Christmas is here. And in the church, this year, it's, the season has seemed so rushed to me. And as it turns out, there's a very practical reason why. And it has to do with Advent. Now, Advent is a church word, and it comes from the Latin, and it literally means coming or arrival. And it is a season in the church, and it's a season that leads us into Christmas so that we prepare for the coming of Christ or to celebrate the birth of Christ. And one of our rituals, maybe you, you know what this is, it's an Advent wreath. And there are four Sundays in Advent, and every Sunday the anticipation builds, and we light a, an additional candle until we get to a night like tonight where we finally get to light the middle candle, the white candle, which represents Christ and the light of Christ shining in the world. And the message is that the light shines, even in the darkness. In the darkness, no matter how dark it gets, it cannot extinguish it. But back to Advent. Because there are four Sundays in Advent, you would think there would be four weeks. But not necessarily. Every now and then, when Advent, because it always begins on a Sunday... When Christmas Day, well, Christmas Day always falls on December 25th. So when Christmas Day is on a Monday, try to stay with me here. When Christmas Day falls on a Monday, it makes for the shortest possible Advent. And so you're going to be doubly blessed tonight if you look at the front page of your bulletin under the date, December 24th. It says fourth Sunday of Advent, and Christmas Eve. We're celebrating both tonight. How's that for efficiency? <laughs> You're welcome. 
So with the short advent, we had to tighten up around here at this church. I mean, we had to get really creative about how we were going to include all our annual seasonal offerings. And we did something this year that we had never done before, at least not in my time here. We held our children's Christmas pageant, get this, on the first Sunday in Advent. Now, before you accuse our church of pushing the season, let me just say to you, it was a wonderful way to usher in this sacred time. And if you were here, you saw what a sight to behold that pageant was. It was amazing. I was so touched by it that I thought tonight I would share some of the highlights of our Advent Week 1 Children's Christmas pageant. First of all, we had a perfectly poised and pondering Mary, played by our own Lynn Murrah, and Julian Ruiz played Joseph, and we had an innkeeper because you cannot have a Christmas pageant without an innkeeper, right? And our innkeeper was our very own Millie Reeves, and when Joseph knocked on the door, she said these two words, go yonder, And then she sang in an angelic voice, away in a manger, no crib for a bed. Featured also in this pageant was a stately donkey. We had some, let's say, spirited sheep. We had a lively cow, and we had some stoic magi. And of course, of course we had a star. In our case, it was the Star of Davis. And our narrators, they presented beautifully. And if you were here, you saw it for yourselves, how our angels glowed, let's say, with some uh, joyous (laughs) ho-hum. And yet, on that first Sunday in Advent, the Spirit never waned. And suddenly, out of seemingly nowhere, our three-foot-tall camel, played by Henson Taylor, he made a superhero pole vault dive into the choir loft. (laughs) And by the grace of God, he came out without a scratch. (laughs) And then, one of our shepherds, E.P. Crow, he nearly stole the show with his MC Hammer dance-like moves. And I think we have a video. You can check it out. (laughs) And although it's been said many times, many ways, it truly was here at First United Methodist Church in downtown Gulfport, one of the best Christmas pageants ever. And you can clap if you agree. (laughs) Friends, we will never know. We will never know for certain what actually happened long ago on that first Christmas. What we know is that God entered God entered our world. God entered into our collective and vulnerable humanity. But in ways, hear this, God entered our world in ways that were completely unexpected. First, let me just share, it was an unplanned pregnancy. And this poor couple, they were left having to figure out some of the most unusual circumstances. And before they could have that hurry up, get married kind of wedding, they had to travel all the way from their hometown to Bethlehem because there was this imposed census and tax, not just on them, but on all the world. And I looked it up. The mileage from Nazareth to Bethlehem is somewhere around 90 miles to 100 miles, and that is if they didn't get lost or get off track. So I want you to imagine with me tonight. Joseph, making this long journey, probably by foot. And at this point, Mary is heavily pregnant. And so this is why many nativities have her featured riding on a donkey as she makes this journey. And if this so-called census really happened, and by the way, these gospel writers aren't writing for historical fact, but theological impact. 
And if that really happened, you need to know, this is really important, that Bethlehem would have been super, super crowded because people would be piling in. And we're actually told in the story, according to Luke, that there's no room in the inn. Well, that's one translation. Or guest room. You've got to remember, this is before Holiday Inns and all these wonderful hotels we have, right? So families would have been piling in for the census. There is no room. But I want you to remember this. When it comes to God and God's love, God makes a way. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care about the chaos. I do care, but what I'm saying, whatever you're going through, no matter how dark this world may seem, always remember that God makes a way. When it comes to God and God's love, God always makes a way. And with that backdrop in mind, I want you to hear the promise of the gospel according to Luke one more time. While they were there, meaning Bethlehem, while they were there, the time came for Mary to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him snugly in bands of cloth, and she laid him in a manger because... Because there was no room elsewhere. You know, over the years I have collected many Christmas stories, some of which include Christmas pageants. And for some reason, this particular pageant keeps coming to heart and mind. It was published first in 1972 in the Guideposts Christmas Treasury. It's a personal story. It's written by a, an author and a father named Rex Knowles. And part of the story goes like this. It was the week before Christmas when this author was babysitting his four young children, which means he had locked himself away in his private study while the kids ran amok all throughout the house. And suddenly, there was a knock at the door. It was his daughter, Nancy, and she was knocking at the door where he had barricaded himself. But he opened the door, she enters in, and she says to her father, Daddy, we're about to put on a play. Would you like to see it? And this author confesses, I did not. But because of his fatherly responsibilities... He followed his daughter into the living room. And right away, right away, he knew it. This was a Christmas play because at the foot of the piano stool, there was a lighted flashlight wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a shoebox. Rex, age six, had on his father's bathrobe, and in one hand he was holding up a mop. And he sat down on the piano stool and he looked at the flashlight. And then Nancy, age 10, she took a bed sheet and she wrapped it around her head just like this. And then she stood behind her brother Rex and she said these words, I am Mary, this boy is Joseph. Now traditionally, Joseph stands up while Mary sits down. But in this particular case, Mary was was um, sitting down, she was taller than Joseph standing up. And so they thought it looked better this way. (laughs) And then Trudy, age four, came in at a full run, and she had these pillowcases hanging from each of her arms, and then she spread them wide, and she said, I am an angel. And, age eight, When she entered in, this author says, I knew right away. I knew right away that she represented one of the wise men. Because when she moved, it looked like she was riding a camel. And he adds, she was wearing my wife's high heel shoes. (laughs) And she was bedecked in all the jewelry that was available to her. And she was carrying a small pillow with... Three items on it, undoubtedly, those items were gold and frankincense and myrrh. 
And as she undulated across the room, she then bowed to the flashlight. Then she bowed to Mary, to Joseph, to the angel, and to her father. And she said, I am all three wise men. And I bring precious gifts of gold, circumstance, and mud. (laughs) And that was all. The play was over. And this father says, I did not laugh. I prayed. Friends, the real drama, the real drama of Christmas is that God is here. This is what we proclaim this time of year, Emmanuel. God is with us. There is no place that you and I can go where God is not. And so the ancient psalmist, Psalm 139 says, Where can I go from your presence? Where can I flee from your spirit? If I, make, if I, if I ascend to the heavens, God's there. If I make my bed in Sheol, meaning hell, even there God is there. If I take the wings of the morning and I settle at the farthest limits of the sea, which represents all sheer chaos, there God's hand is there to guide us. God's right hand holds us fast. God is with us. And so you see this God of infinite and unconditional love and this God of infinite mercy meets us. Maybe not in the ways we expected, but this God meets us right where we are, especially in our human brokenness and vulnerability. But there is one condition, I hate to tell you. One condition, there's only one, and it's a very important one. And this is a metaphor, not necessarily in the Bible, but I want you to hear me tonight. God made flesh is a lot like free and well-working Wi-Fi. And we have to connect. You see, we have to make room just as God makes room for us. Don't you see? This is how God is born into the world. And so, the invitation on this fourth Sunday in Advent and Christmas Eve night is don't wait. Don't wait for the right time. Don't wait until you um, are less busy. Don't wait until you get your kids out of college. Don't wait until you finally retire. Don't wait for the right church. Goodness knows, don't right, wait for the right minister or the right worship style or music. Don't wait until you get your acts together. And please, please, please do not wait until all the darkness of this world turns to light. Turn to God. Turn right now with all your heart, soul, and mind. Turn to God with all your gold, circumstance, and mud. And may the peace of Christ, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ rule in your hearts. So be it, and so it is. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, Jesus gave thanks to God, and he took the bread, and he broke it. And he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and again gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my blood poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as you drink it, Jesus said, remember me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves and we proclaim together the mystery of faith, that Christ has died. Say it with us. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Gracious and loving God, 
pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on our world and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we can go out into that world and be your hope in a hurting world. And by your Holy Spirit, dear God, through the power of your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry with all the world until we finally one day feast at your heavenly banquet. And now we pray together as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The table's been prepared. And in the United Methodist Church, the table belongs to Christ. And all are welcome. Any age or stage or creed or no creed. All that's required is that you come forward with a willing to receive the love and grace of God. We're going to have five stations. Let me just give you a little instruction here. Because I don't know if you noticed, this is an awkwardly arranged sanctuary. and We're going to try to work this out in a sacred and efficient way. You should see Ruth Bishop's spreadsheet. She's worked really hard on this. We're going to have five stations. Three down front. And then we'll have one in the back for those that want to go to that station, and one in the balcony. And we'll be serving by a method that we ask you to take the host that we'll hand to you, dip it into the common cup. If you want gluten-free, hold your hands out this way. Gluten-free is available at every station. If you'd rather not receive for whatever reason, but you want to come forward and be a part, come forward, hold your hands like this, and we'll bless you instead. Another important piece of instruction. Please wait to come until the ushers prompt you and then we ask you to come down this side of the aisle receive and then go back on the opposite side have I included all the instructions <laughs> but here's what matters most of all your heart if it's filled with chaos and clutter right now just let it go I think sometimes Jesus is up here going okay when are you going to give me your problems whatever your struggle just give it to Jesus tonight and, and come with an open heart ready to receive the gift of God. Would those assisting please come forward at this time?
see how this goes. up your voice and sing. Born is now Emmanuel. Born is our Lord and Savior. Sing Alleluia. Sing Alleluia.
Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us and now help us to go out into the world and be your hands and feet. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
remember, friends, that life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel away with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.